So, Michael, what is it that makes Stevenson's rocket the special object which it now is for us in history and technology, do you think? Well, I think rocket is uh, special because it was the locomotive that first demonstrated the practicability of this new form, this new mode of transport mm. that was represented by the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. To make it, that operation possible, uh, George Stevenson anticipated the, the need for a significant development of the steam locomotive to operate a line on a regular timetabled service at much higher speed, hauling much higher loads than had hitherto been the case, for example, on the Stockton and Darlington mm. Railway. George Stevenson himself was, of course, so involved in the building of the Liverpool and Manchester line himself that he delegated that responsibility for developing the locomotive to his son Robert. And Robert Stevenson and his team at the works in Newcastle upon Tyne set about what today we might call a research and development program in which he considered each of the component, um, components of the locomotive and looked at the ways in which they could be improved to fulfill this requirement for this new mode of transport. What is it, do you think, that's special about the way in which the Liverpool-Manchester line works? You mentioned Stockton and Darlington Railway. There had been other railways before. What are the special demands which the Manchester-Liverpool company are, are placing, really, on what traction engines should be able to do? Well, the Stockton and Darlington and the other early lines were built quite specifically for the movement of coal from various collieries in, in County Durham and elsewhere uh, through to the riverside for shipment to, to London and elsewhere. That was a particular requirement. It did not require speed. It just required solid, reliable, everyday movement of coal. Between Liverpool and Manchester, we have a very different requirement. There were two cities just over 30 miles apart. That, re that required a great deal of movement of goods and as subsequently was apparent passengers as well mm. between the two cities and indeed in the, to, to, to the various places in between. So you needed reliability, you needed mm. much greater speed. These are the kinds of demands that in a sense George is asking Robert to meet. That's right. Speed is one thing but certainly load haulage capability is another and the ability to maintain a timetabled service which does require reliability. So you have a very different form of movement in two directions than you had on a line like Stockton and Darlington. And with those kinds of demands, you see a change, is this true, in the design process itself, if we can use that word. I mean, what Robert Stevenson and his colleagues are doing is something pretty unprecedented. Yes, that's right. To, to take a, a, a long, hard look at each of the components in turn and ask that basic question, how can we improve it? For example, the boiler. Mm. How can we generate more steam? How can we generate it more quickly and maintain that steam supply such that we can move a train mm. at a reasonable speed between the two cities 30 miles apart? Now, that was quite a step forward. So a number of attempts were made to improve the boiler, to improve the, the thermal efficiency of the boiler. The process began in 1828 and there were a series of prototypes introducing a number of these innovations. By the time we got to the Rainhill Trials in 1829, the process had evolved as far as Rocket and Rocket is therefore a most important example of one of these prototypes, but it was just one prototype. Yes, I think this is important, isn't it? Rocket is very much a stage of de development improvement and development go on after the trials and after the 15th of September 1830 as well. D and indeed, um, Rocket is not perhaps the most significant steam engine of that period. Well, Rocket did introduce one very important innovation that of course was the multi-tubular yeah. boiler. Uh, but it didn't stop there. In the year following the Rainhill trials, impro significant improvements were made to design and particularly to the thermal efficiency of the locomotive, such that by the time you got to the opening of the railway, Rocket was already uh, becoming quite um, an old example of locomotive yeah. technology. Yeah. So th think about publicity, because that seems to play, publicity and advertising seem to play quite a distinctive role in the Rocket's early career. The Rainhill trials themselves, it's very important that they're public. What were people expecting to see 
at those trials? What were they expecting to see in 1829 and 1830? It was very difficult for them to know what to expect because they hadn't got any, anything to base their ideas on. They're, they were familiar with uh, fire engines, for example, yeah. uh, which were the, the, the major cities in the country had, and therefore, they, they, in their mind, they were perhaps expecting to see something like a fire engine. And, and fire engines, boilers look very different from what That's right, in yes, rocket. indeed. So the novelty locomotive, which was one of the competitors of Raynell, was in fact expected to be superior to the other examples. Oh, yeah, but of course, uh, Rocket herself demonstrated um, many major improvements over and above the, uh, the, the, the rather basic design uh, yeah. that, uh, of, of, that the novelty locomotive had. And by September 1830, the kind of technological system Rocket represents is trusted. People are confident that it will work. How risky is the kind of investment that the Liverpool and Manchester Company are making? Well, I think it's. Uh, important to recognize that the Liverpool and Manchester was an enormous risk by the promoters of the line. The, there was no precedent and therefore yeah. they had no idea what sort of return they were going to get on that investment. George and Stevens, it's very expensive. And it's very expensive indeed. It's, it has to be one of the most expensive projects that, right. had been, that the country had seen for right. many a long right. year since the, the major days of canal building and sure. such like. Um, George Stevenson having argued so strongly for the use of locomotives against rope haulage yeah. um, was accepted by half the board of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, but the other half were still very sceptical because, of course, George Stevenson was a partner in the firm of locomo uh, locomotive builders that were proposing to supply the locomotives for the line, and one can understand that scepticism. Uh, and the arguments that are recorded in the minutes of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway became quite, quite fierce. Um, therefore, it was a, a brilliant idea on the part of one of the directors of the line to be able for George Stevenson to demonstrate that his locomotives were indeed superior to, to, those, other to those of yeah. other locomotive builders. Yeah. Uh, this meant that he could demonstrate that locomotive haulage was indeed suitable for their new line and that they could dismiss all further thought yeah. of rope haulage. But at the same time, he was able to demonstrate that his locomotives were superior to the others. In the end, when Rocket rolls out on 15th of September 1830, um, it's a pretty risky system, but it already has a very good track record. And the success of that day was pretty crucial for Stevenson father and son, wasn't it? That's right, but of course once we get to the 15th of September 1830, as you rightly say, the locomotive technology has moved on mm. a further year beyond yeah. the technology of, of, of rocket. Some major improvements have yeah. been made, and these had been already demonstrated to those who were privileged to have uh, journeys on some of the trials yeah. that were being run.